and share and reshare uh, slide just so you know Oops, there we go so two seconds go and hi simon can you hear me yes hello can you ping uh, the link for the event to Frederick at Google? Yes. Yeah, thanks. So I can do it, yeah. Thanks. I'm on it. Frederick Walsh, turn right. Mm. So I've sent the same link with you, which is in that invite, which I have open for my companion yeah. mode, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Matthias from Einride is here. I don't have the, the cover. Okay, do you want to mute until we get started? Oh, uh, sorry. Welcome people joining. Just give us a moment while uh, we wait for some more people to join us. Yeah, I think let's give it another few seconds. Yeah, so uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the call. Um, today we are doing this Do It AI um, Google Workspace demo introduction for um, all of our uh, users, customers who are using Google Workspace. Um, for this call, we have two people who are going to be presenters today. Um, Simon French, who is head of Google Workspace in Devo Team Sweden um, and uh, supporting Pablo uh from google works um, devo team google workspace team based in scotland um so we will walk through some uh functions and features for do it ai um and uh, also some demo use cases for all of you guys so i'll just hand this over to to you simon and pablo to to start with thank you very much solomon and uh, welcome everyone to the call today um I'm joined, uh, as Solomon said, by our colleague uh, based in the UK, Pablo. And uh, Pablo, I'm going to ask you to click on the, the next slide, actually. Um, yeah. Sure. I'm no, just, just giving you co-presenter, so you should okay. see that. Too. So let's go. OK, great. So together, we're your dedicated Debra team uh, support team for, for Google Workspace. And we're really happy to have you uh, join us uh, in this session today. Um, 
Today, the newest generations of workers are either entering the workforce in large numbers or growing into decision-making positions. These generations grew up using Google Workspace in their schools and, and daily lives, and they expect and strongly prefer Google Workspace as a way to get work done. Google is a pioneer in the area of AI. They've been in the game for a really long time. Uh, actually, they turned 25 the other week. Um, and the thing that has evolved AI is something called large language models, right? And this is the foundation for generative AI, which is what we'll be showing today, uh, where the computer can actually generate things for you. So with this slide, I want to just put things into context. Um, this gives you a good overview of the, the Google AI landscape. Um, Google's custom built lots of different AI tools for, for practitioners, for developers, and of course, business users. Um, but today we'll just be talking about the one in the top left hand corner, Duod AI. Um, Duod AI is actually an AI collaborator on both uh, Google Cloud and Google Workspace. And yes, there are actually two Duod AIs. Um, but the one that we're focusing on today is in this session is Duod AI for Google Workspace. So where did it all start? Um, go back to 2015, um, and there's something called Google DeepMind's AlphaGo. And actually, before I start there, I just want to go back and say, you know, AI is essentially the third big shift, right? Google talks about it as being the third big shift. First, there was internet, then there was mobile, and now there's AI. Um, and simply put, I think AI is the most profound technology we're working on today, and that I think I at least will see in my lifetime. But back in 2015, uh, Google DeepMind's AlphaGo became the first computer program to defeat a professional human Go player, as well as the first to, to defeat a, a, a world champion. Go is essentially the oldest board game in the world. It's a strategy board game developed um, a couple of thousand years ago. And you essentially need to learn the feel of what the next uh, go would be. Um, and ever since then, you know, AI has continued to evolve. In 2018, for example, uh, Google developed for the world's first language model, Google's BERT. And just recommend, if you haven't seen it, there is actually a fantastic doc documentary on uh, AlphaGo. Uh, it's on it's on YouTube. So I highly recommend it. Uh, recommend it if you want to watch it. But basically, you know, Google's already been incorporating AI features into many of their products for a very long time. Um, security controls in Google, uh, Gmail, for example, to block spam and, and phishing messages, uh, smart compose in Gmail, uh, spelling and grammar suggestions, noise cancellation in Meet, the different backgrounds in Meet we, that we have, all AI generated, file suggestions in Drive. And now, of course, we also have Duet AI, which is like your buddy or companion to help you bring another level of productivity uh, to, your, to your daily work. So I'm just going to show a couple of uh, things here to kind of show the timeline of, of the evolution of AI. Back in 2016, Google launched one of the first very powerful um, AI features called Explore. Many of you, I'm sure, are very familiar with it. Um, it allowed everyone interacting with spreadsheets uh, to kind of get meaningful insights and, and use natural language to build and create uh, enhanced spreadsheets, uh, if you like. Um, as an example, you know, you could generate a pivot table or in slides, you can use natural language to, to kind of find out, for example, what the average profit is per, per product group maybe. Fast forward a little bit to 2018. Uh, Google launched one of their, their best um, and most, I would say, appreciated features um, called Smart Reply, and, and later on this um, also became Smart Compose. Um, these features allowed you to kind of quickly reply to emails. And essentially, I would say this is like a teaser. This was a, essentially a free sample of Duod AI already back then, and now we have the full product today. Last year, um, Google introduced conversation summary in chat. Um, it's a really great example of how we're already contextualizing conversations in, in Google Workspace.
And then this year, Google welcomed Duod AI for Google Workspace, which essentially helps you make you more effective in your working day and makes it easier to things for you to get things done, like helping you to write um, emails, docs, um, it acts as a proofreader. Uh, also, it's not just about writing, um, it's also about summarizing um, uh, text, uh, for example, in, in docs. Helps you to visualize things uh, better in slides. Um, it helps you to connect. So there's, you know, the kind of podcasting studio quality uh, look and sound in Meet. Um, and then the live translator captions generates amazing, you know, backgrounds in Meet as well. And it also helps you to organize uh, things in, in Sheets. And there's more on the way. But at this point, I'm going to actually leave over to, to Pablo so he can deep dive into the demo. And just to note, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to pop them into the chat or hold them until later. We'll be here to, to answer them. And for those who are attending on site, we'll also be doing live demos. But for now, uh, thank you. And uh, Pablo, please, your turn to take over. Sure. Thank you very much, Simone, for that. It's great. Uh, so I, I do know, I think I do know a, a lot of you guys, if I've, I've met you before, or we've par crossed paths at some point. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm, I'm based in Scotland. Uh, I, I've worked with Google Workspace for about 10 years now, and uh, Jua AI has been uh, the nonstop roller coaster of the last two weeks, or at least maybe, maybe probably more, actually, if I'm totally honest. So um, yeah, let's, let's, let's deep dive into uh, Jua AI. Um, so let's take a look first. The, I'll show you first one part I can't demo, um, which is the mobile interface. Now, um, you don't really think about that. First thing you think about when you think about your Google account sitting in an office uh, or, or a desk on your laptop and, you, and you're thinking about your account, but actually this is a lifesaver. Um, I've got to be honest, I thought, what, what is this AI thing? It, it, it sounds a bit like a gimmick, um, but actually, uh, the, the bit that changed my mind, the bit that showed me that this was really useful is the, the mobile interface. Um, so my experience of this was walking in up, up the stairs of a Ryanair airplane, don't, don't judge me, it was Ryanair, um, you know, typing, replying to an email, uh, the question about GDPR, uh, holding my, my child in one hand, phone in the other, thinking that's a behind the desk kind of email to write. But actually I thought, oh, I see that Jew AI button. Let me, let me give that a go. And actually by typing in, provide all of the latest updates to GDPR standards for a, a reply. It not only got the reply and briefed it in a formal way, but it actually went online to look at the latest information of that policy to put it into my reply. That's the moment of truth when I sat down in the plane and thought, my goodness, between stairs to seat, I've drafted a formal email about GDPR. Hmm, that's an interesting interaction. So. You've got to remember the context of where you're saving time, but also making sure that your information is formulated properly for, with live data online as well. Um, I didn't say this earlier, but I am going to ask you some questions and opinions, and I want some feedback within this session. So if you're in the meet, uh, feel free to stick your hand up when I ask questions uh, and when I ask you some some for some suggestions as well. If you're in a room, whisper it to Simone or whoever's in the room with you um, and, and we'll get it over to me. So good, uh, excellent. So that's Gmail uh, on the mobile, uh, to do A on the mobile. Good, so I've gone too fast. Um, oh, we've got two, there you go. You can see it uh, again on, on the mobile. So I'm actually gonna go straight into to Gmail. I'm gonna start with Gmail because that's, that's where we start our day. Uh, if I'm honest, I open up my, my morning mailbox and that's where, where I'll go. So uh, I'm going to switch to sharing. Uh, so let me stop sharing this for a second and then head over to uh, this window here. Now, I used to do this on my live mailbox, this demo, but um, I have been told off and I shouldn't be doing it with a live a live mailbox. So you don't have my live mailbox today, thankfully. Um, but I do have an email. Look at that. It came in at literally uh, two minutes ago. Um, so if I click that email just now, um, you, you can't get more real time than that. Literally two minutes ago, I got an email and this is the actual email that we got everyone in the office, which is positive thinking day. Uh, so guys, today is positive thinking day. Please think positive. Uh, it's important. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to zoom in. Actually, you might not be able to read it very well. You don't have to read the context. I can I can tell you it's about making sure that you think positive um, throughout the, during the day. Um, so I'm going to reply 
to that email. Not reply all, thankfully not. Uh, and at the bottom, what you'll see is help me write. You can ignore that banner. There we go. So help me write. What I'm going to do is there is a tendency to be polite to AI. You don't need to do that. I'm just going to say is it is not a good day for this initiative. Now, because I haven't had my coffee yet, but I'm going to reply saying it's not a good day for this initiative. Now, keep in mind, I haven't told Jua AI what the initiative is, why it's not a good day. So I'm asking here for some assumptions almost. So, and, and as always with demos, things change. I've, uh, you know, you don't always get the same output. So, so don't get angry with me if it's, if it's not ideal. So let's go for it, let's hit create. What it's gonna do is it's gonna read the context of the email, the way it's written and come back to me. So it says here, thanks for the initiative. However, today is not a good day to be asking asking this of us. Uh, we're in the middle of a big project and we're under a lot of pressure. I suggest we table this and try again next week when we're all in a better headspace. Thanks, Joe AI. Uh, you've assumed I'm in a big project. When am I not? Um, and, and you've politely said, let's, let's table this for another day. That's great. So here you've got the assumption making. I'm going to show you even more assumption making in a second. But the point here is that you can manipulate that. It's already formally written. You can manipulate that to tweak it, like maybe not next week, two weeks, whatever. You, you've got the, the groundwork for the email. And let's be honest, everyone hates the, the fluffy bits around an email. So let your AI do that for you. Good. Um, on that note, you can refine the email, um, so you can make it more formal, uh, elaborate, or shorten that email. The I'm feeling lucky button, I wouldn't do that if you're sending to customers and things. The last time I've done that, I think I got a poem or, or pirate speak. Let's go, uh, true to Google's nature. There we go, now we've got, uh, this is a poem. Uh, I did get a song with verses and choruses the other time. So we, we could we could sing it to her in, in a song as well. Thank you, AI, for that. Uh, good. Um, so that's one email. Now. As, as nice and, 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 and as good as that feels, let's go into a slightly more realistic um, scenario. So in this case, we've got a very angry, oops, let's discard the suggestion. Thank you, Joe AI. Uh, we've got a very angry person emailing me, Simone, why are you so angry? It's because um, in this, I'm just gonna give you the background. In, in this scenario, I, I'm working for a bamboo furniture company. I am a support agent and Simone is very angry. Uh, it's delayed her, uh, delayed her furniture delivery by three months. Um, and when it did arrive, it was damaged. That's not good. Um, so she says she's already called the department on the 10th of October and reported the damage and was told she'd get a replacement as soon as possible, but not received anything. Um, wow, she's very disgruntled. Let's see what we can do. So as a support agent, I'm going to reply to Simone. Um, and what I'm going to put in here is actually, let me, uh, let me not reply. There we go. So in here, I'm going to say, um, and, and again, I haven't drafted, this is on the fly, true to true, true demos, expect it to go wrong. So uh, provide, um, I need, I need to tell it to reply or provide a response. Uh, explain uh, what the next steps are to resolve this uh, issue. Um, um, and explain. Oops. I haven't had my coffee, I'm sorry. And explain um, how we prevent this from happening again. Pretty broad. Again, lots of assumptions to be made here. So I'm asking it to explain what the next steps are to resolve their issue and explain how we prevent this from happening again. So let's hit create on this. Again, please, might have to do it again, might have to rephrase the prompt, true to, to do AI and, and, and AI. Uh, it's all, there we go. Okay. Well, this is good. So uh, I'm very sorry to hear about your experience with our furniture delivery, and I understand your frustration and want to do everything that we can to resolve your issue and satisfaction. Great, uh, great objection handling here. So uh, so I'll, I'll, I won't read it ever, word by word, but uh, we've received your account and see that your, your customer services were contacted and reported the damage. We'll send you a replacement on October 15th. I see it's not arrived yet. So following your shipping, um, it might be sent out as soon as possible. In the meantime, I'd like to offer you a full refund for the damaged furniture and send you 20% discount. Jesus, to AI, we're after a and you can't give them that much, but just, just as well I can tweak it. Um, and apologize for the inconvenience you've caused you. Uh, we'll make sure that it doesn't happen again. So 
again, lots of assumptions made, but I'm loving this. I have literally put in a short sentence and it's it's almost teaching me how to objection handle in my support case. So this you've got to think about the use cases here and how actually you're upskilling your your team already by using that Jira AI uh, tool set. Good. Okay. Uh, with that, I'll move on. I'm getting through this quite quickly. Um, but let's have a look. What's the next uh, next one? Oh, I will add actually. Sorry, I should add. So um, really important. Con uh, what I haven't showed you here is. Um, Jira AI is going to read the entire email conversation. So um, the conversation back and forth, who's included, the type of language that's in that conversation, and then take that all into consideration when creating a reply. And very soon you'll see, you'll be able to do a summary of long threads. So you don't have to read through the whole thing. Okay. Good. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, Bear with me. Actually, you know what? I, there is a slide for it, but I'm just going to straight try drive straight into the demo. Uh, the next one is uh, slides. So, uh, quick tip: if anyone didn't know this, in order to make a new slide or a new doc or a new sheet really quickly, you can type slides.new in the URL bar. You don't have to go to Drive; it just creates a new file straight there, and then docs.new and sheets.new. So that's what I did. I typed slides.new, and then I get this box, which uh, most of you will not have seen before if you haven't used your AI. Um, this is where I'm going to get a little bit of feedback from you guys. So um, here we're going to create uh, a scene with an item. So I'm going to need two pieces of information from you. Now, before I ask for this information, do not give me something like Universal Studios or something that's a photograph of a place. We're using AI here to generate a new image, a unique, not already created image. So I need something generic. So uh, if you're on the meet, type in a scene, a location. I'll give you some examples uh, in front of a waterfall. Um, you know, some, some, maybe somewhere you recently went for a, a walk, a hike, a holiday. Give me a, a scene. I don't want you to, to think I've... I've we prepared this. So uh, in the meet chat section at the bottom there, uh, type and then in the room, if you have any suggestions, whisper it out to, uh, or put your hand up and, and whisper out to someone or whoever's in the other room as well. Um, but I'm gonna give you a second here. There we go, okay, all right. Ooh, we've got lots coming in already. That's a very sp a Portuguese beach. What makes a beach Portuguese? I'm gonna have to ask you that one later. I don't know why that's specific. Uh, uh, Dolomites, okay, interesting, Egypt. Uh, and then uh, Simone and team, I assume you're writing it in here as well, and they're about to put it in the clouds, okay. Okay, Kirsty, you're going way too far ahead here. I, I don't want the whole picture, I just want the background scene. Someone else can do the, the, the picture, okay. Oh, we've got Halloween, of course. All right, um, good. Um, all right, so we've got two for forest. I think we're gonna go for forest. So let's put a forest. Um, Sorry, did you, did Simone and, and team, did you have a suggestion maybe? No? Okay, I'm going to go for forest because I've got two. Oh, choose one. Choose, okay, fine. So, uh, forest on fire, let's not, let's not, uh, it, I mean, I know it's the morning, but let's, let's not go that dramatically negative with forest on fire. So, okay, so that's the scene. I've got the forest here. I know I haven't got the full prompt here. Now, someone else, um, can you provide me with uh, either a, 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 pl a plate of food, a food item that isn't normal, normally in your day to day. So I'm thinking like a pad thai or, you know, something that you don't find in the rainforest, perhaps. That's also a, an interesting one. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, think, I'm, I'm in Scotland, so I'm thinking fish and chips. Uh, meatballs. Okay. Maybe spaghetti meatballs. It's got oh, haggis. Oh, I'm not sure if AI will be able to do haggis. I don't even know how to picture haggis. Okay. Uh, poutine. Okay. Excellent. Um, this is great. These are some great suggestions. <laughs> so let's do this. I'll do I'll do a few of these, okay? So because there's some really good ones here. So let's go for um, let's go for su um, sushi in a forest. I can imagine that in Japan. I reckon there is a photo of that. So um, let's go from the top. Let's oh, meatballs, spaghetti. Things um, you're definitely spending spaghetti wrong. Oh, apologies. Oops. Let's just do meatballs. Italian meatballs. There we go. I just want to be more specific. So, um, 
Italian meatballs or a plate of, I should put, uh, Italian meatballs in a forest. Okay, Let's, fingers crossed, guys. Sometimes it doesn't always work. Let's go for it if it's too specific. So while that's generating, um, I'm glad that no one said this, but there it, you, so I should catch up. There you go, the last one. Actually, that's an interesting one. So if I was to put Heinz ketchup in here, it would do one of two things. It will either give me an error or it will give me some butchered version of Heinz ketchup. Um, okay, it's, it's just done meals because it doesn't do copyright material. So these images are copyright free for you to be able to use them. I mean, it's really not focused on the, uh, on the forest this one's got a forest somewhere in the background let's do it in a forest scene let's try it let's try uh scene okay. might try a different scene if it's not if not working in there um so i'll repeat what i just said the copyright stuff is important so if you try and put something in there, copyright it's not going to create like can of coke it's not going to give you the coke logo um it's going to try and do something else <laughs> that's the interesting one here um there we go. And then we'll, we'll, we'll try two, two other ones. So uh, forest seems to be a difficult one. Let's try, um, what have we got, a mount, uh, mountains? A spooky lake. Let's do a spooky lake. And then a different dish. What's not in it? Let's do ketchup. Oh, ke ketchup's a sauce. That's not going to be very interesting. Let's do I'm I'm curious if poutine works. So plate of poutine. Uh, and what did we say? A spook in on a, on a, uh, in front of a spooky lake. All right, let's try uh, let's try a different one from you guys. You guys have got some creative ones. Someone said "boy your best" the other day, and uh, and that's that's just horrible for me to try and spell. So uh, there we go. Oh, look at that. There we go. I don't know how spooky this lake is. I think spooky is object, you know, uh, opinion based, but uh, at least you've got a, a plate of poutine in front of a lake there. Um, I, I don't know how common it is to eat poutine in front of a lake, but um, I'm going to assume there isn't many photos of that. I think the point here is um, you're, you're, you're generating a new image that's not been existing. So I think be careful with, with confusing what you use image search for and what you use AI generation for. Um, so I'm going to show you, and let me just go back to my slides. If you give me a second, I will show you um, an example that we did previously uh, with another customer. So in that, uh, let's do here. Um, previously, we had a dog food company. And we work with them closely. Um, and they said, you know what? If this image generation is so good, then why don't you get it to do um, one of our mascots? Our mascot is like a, a dog with a blue scarf. So let's do a dog with a blue scarf on a boat. Um, here's some of the examples. This was back in early August, uh, say. So it, it, it did a pretty good job. In fact, um, they, they wanted to start using it. Um, to, to help them lower their cost of, of photography and dog handlers, all that stuff. So we had a catch up and said, how are things going? And they said, yeah, they're good, they're good. Um, and just last week, uh, we uh, we did uh, did the same prompt again. Now I want you to look at the comparison here. So exactly the same prompt, the quality of image is dramatically improved. Now, I'm gonna take back a little bit from the demo for a second and explain something here. AI is one of those constantly learning tools, right? So we've seen what we previously had, and I'll just go, I'll skip back to the previous slide so you can see. That was the previous prompt. There's a, bit, a little bit artsy, uh, less photographic, but this is the current prompt. And over time, these the out, learning algorithms are constantly being improved. And just a few weeks has dramatically improved the image generation. The same thing is happening on, you know, replying to emails, document writing. All of this stuff is constantly being improved. And I, I think of it as a, as a, you know, if you're going up a hill, you know, both sides, so people and, and AI. And uh, AI is understanding people more, and and, and people are understanding AI more. We're going to hit that peak. I don't think we're quite at that peak yet. Um, where actually the, the the learning algorithms work really nicely together. So it's a constantly improving product. Um, this is where we say, uh, you know, join Google, 
on the journey of AI, as you saw the timeline earlier, rather than watch from the sidelines and try and catch up later. It's very much like the, the, the internet bubble, if you like. You know, it, it became very big very quickly. Um, good. I think I got a question there is, can it reflect emotions and image feeling? Um, I'm going to demo that one because I haven't tried it, but it's a great question. Um, I, I wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to think it might choose the style and how it, how it does draw it. But just for the demo sake, I'm going to try it later and get back to you. That's a very a good question. Good. All right. Uh, let's go into the next one. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to head over to Sheets. Sheets new. Sorry, excuse me. And we'll switch over to present. Oh, shoot, here we go. Right. I want to give you this scenario <coughs> before I, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, before I start typing. So the scenario here, going back to the customer service agent again. So this time I'm a customer service agent for Sony PlayStation. And I get this really detailed case and I need to get back to this user because they're just getting frustrated now. I need to get back to them with exactly what the steps they need to do in order to fix their issue. So this person's having issues when they're trying to load their game on their PlayStation, they just get a black screen. Now, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. Um, I just thought, what, what kind of issue is gonna happen on PlayStation? What can we ask your AI to do? I did test, it's a, it's a live demo, it's live live on YouTube. I did test this before, so uh, but I, I promise you I didn't test it much. I just give it a go before the session. So in here, I'm gonna do a prompt that says, provide a list of troubleshooting steps in your PlayStation 5, uh, if, if your PlayStation 5 shows a blank screen when loading a game. So let's go create, oh, thank you very much. Let's hit create on this. And now what I'm gonna explain here is that Duet AI is connected to public internet, Google search. So it is going to try, it will get the latest and greatest information it can. So recently indexed search results, for example. And in here, I, I mean, I, I can zoom in a little bit just so you can see as well. Um, it has gone, and I'm going to make the assumption it's probably got it from PlayStation's website tr for troubleshooting. And it's got the five steps to do. So check the power, restart PlayStation 5, update the PlayStation 5 software. But it also gives a description, expected result, and notes. Now, I'm pretty impressed with that because I understand that you probably go online and find those steps. But I like that it's got the expected results and notes. And now the support agent can choose as much of this that they can send to that customer. So again, as a support agent, I haven't had to keep my troubleshooting materials up to date. It's live on the PlayStation website or wherever it is online. It's um, you know it's detailed and written in a formal English. So here we go with with being able to really elevate the skills of your of your workers. This one, I'm going to show you one more sheets demo. Um, now, what I what what this doesn't demo. I'm sorry, let me finish. Actually, you can just click insert here, and it will insert that for you, and you can start working. So, um, based on that, I would say um, you've got a good starting point, even if you need more detail and things like that. But what this doesn't demo is the live data you can get from the internet. So, with that in mind. I'm going to give you a very strange uh, background on this one. So um, recently, and it's still do it going now, f five weeks is a bit long for, for me to be getting my bathroom redone. It was leaking. It's actually got a leak here in my office. Um, so we had to get our bathroom redone. And I said to my wife, we need to choose, uh, we need to choose a loo. We need to choose a toilet for our bathroom. And she's okay, just choose one. I said, no, but we need a good one. Um, and and that's when you get the eye roll and she knows exactly what I'm trying to do. And I want to com feature compare, you know, the latest and greatest Japanese style toilets because I want to have a look at them and, uh, you know, start big and, then we'll, and we end up with a, a, a not so expensive toilet. But the point here is that um, bidet toilets, if you've ever looked for them, uh, are very hard to find outside of the US and Japan. So in this demo, I thought, oh, you know what, I'm gonna spend a few hours looking at which ones I can import, how much it's gonna cost. So I sat there with my wife, 37 weeks pregnant, really not in the mood for this, just wants to leave. Um, and I said, well, let's let Dua AI do the hard work for us. So in here, <coughs> I, uh, 
I asked to create a feature and price comparison table for BDEC shower toilets. They're also called shower toilets, by the way, um, for different, oh, why is it doubled? For different BDEC and shower toilets uh, in the available in the UK. I've double written there, so there we go. Um, now, importantly, in that prompt, I asked for in the UK. If you look for these online, you get them in yen, you get them in dollars, and you get import costs, and you have to convert all the pricing so you can compare the prices. So what do AI is doing here, I don't know if you can see this very well, let me see if I can zoom in for you. Um, they've gone ahead and done, uh, it's gone ahead and done a bit of extra work, basically, as what I wasn't expecting. I don't know if this is working for you. Hopefully you can see it. Um, it's got the brand, the model, but it's got the price and great, whoops. Yeah, go ahead, insert it, there we go. It's got the price in Great British Pounds. This has, means it's gone online, looked at the prices, converted them to Great British Pounds, and put them into my sheet, right? So it's done that extra mile because I've asked it in the prompt that it's UK. Um, it's made an assumption on, on, the, um, on the features as well, and it gives me what it thinks are features that I will be I'll care about. It's interesting, wall, wall mounted. Now, I want to show you something. The reason I use this prompt is because I did this about two two weeks ago. Um, and if I just share the the same prompt about two weeks ago, uh, again, I'm going to go to historic uh, screenshot here. Um, you'll see that the, the prices are different. I don't know, well, you probably didn't capture the price in there, but I can tell you the prices are different. Um, I can tell you that the, the, the features are, are set differently and the warranties, and that's because it's based on today's data or latest indexed data. This is really important. If I run this same prompt tomorrow or the day after or next week and prices have changed or rates have changed, it will have the latest information on there according to the prompt, right? So that's really important. Good. Um, okay, with that, we'll go to the next uh, section here. Now we're going to start talking about Google Docs. Now, I assume you guys are thinking, ah, oh, do it AI. It's going to be great for content creation in Google Docs. I purposely did not start with Google Docs because actually it's in so many other services too. But what I'm going to do is show you a bit of a demo on the Google Docs. Before I do, question time. I haven't done many questions today. Usually I do in my demos. Okay, let's see who's still caffeinated, awake, and listening. So hands up if you know and have used smart chips in Google Docs. And I'm looking at the rooms too, because you can't get away of not putting your hand up in the rooms. Uh, so there's no one in the creative tech room. That's, that's a shame. And barely anyone in Sweden. Don't be shy, guys. Pablo, we have a question here from the Malm office. Okay, sure. Go for it. Uh, while you guys get your hands up, I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, regarding uh, wrong spelling, how important is it to uh, spell correctly? I can tell you from a severely dyslexic person. <laughs> yes. It, it does actually do some impressive um, assumptions with, with uh, spelling. Um, depending on the, the grade of spelling error, I was going to say, um, I would say it's on the same level of your spell check in, in Gmail and, and Google Docs. Um, but I have had to go in and, and redo a few times. So it's, it's a good question. I've not had that one before. But, but I, one I can I, definitely answer. I, I have used AI a little bit. And, and you, can, you, you can send a prompt uh, with uh, wrong spelling, so to speak. And yeah. it, and it uh, um, makes assumptions there, there also that you have spelled it wrong. The word. So it, it does, yeah. Like, yeah. So, so th this is important, actually, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna pause on this one because I think it's it's very important we understand this. Um, so, the difference between <clears throat> programming prompts. So, I don't know if everyone anyone played those DOS games where you have to type in the prompt of what the person has to do next, right? You had to type it almost exactly right, right? That's not what we're doing here. Generative AI is going to read the context of what is written. That's really important. So if your context it, it, it understood 90% of your sentence with the context with the words you put in there, the actual spelling mistake is, is actually going to be corrected by the context it's understood rather than all words that could be similar Excellent. on top of your spell checking that you normally get in, in, in text. So actually AI is gonna do a little bit better with that spell checking and understanding the context than it would with a, a, a you know, a, a, like a spell checker, if that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Okay. 
Um, and on the language one, it's English at the moment with uh, other languages coming soon. Um, we, I did capture some of those hands. I'd say there was only like 10 or 20% of people putting their hands up for this, the question about smart chips. So I am going to do a little bit of a non do AI thing in order for you to appreciate the prompt I'm gonna put in in a second. So with that said, um, this is actually quite a good tip in general, if you're using Google Workspace. Um, smart chips, let me uh, share my screen and go through that just now. Uh, Bear with me. Let's do a new window. And and you can see I'm going to do this, uh, as I said earlier. So doc dot new gets you a new document straight up. So that's tip number one. You can use that one. Thank me later. Buy me a coffee, whatever you like. Uh, good. So um, ignore that Duet AI prompt for now. Um, if, if you type the at symbol into a doc, uh, whoops or not, well, there we go. You're gonna get something called a smart chip. A smart chip is one of those things to get get stuff done quicker. You don't want to do all the you know, fluffy stuff like creating tables and, and, and variables. So, so one of the things in here would be meeting notes. Now, I can't show, ah, there's no meetings here because it's my demo account. Um, let me try a different one then. So here I'm gonna do a uh, draft an email. So if I do an at chip, and I hit draft an email in a doc. Everyone that has access to that Google doc can then help me draft an email in, in this format. And then I hit this button who, or whoever hits this button, it will take you straight to Gmail to be able to send that email. It's the same thing with calendar events. So if I do at and I do a, uh, have a look, oops, let me scroll down, uh, calendar event draft. So I might be working with marketing team actually together with the team will draft the event, will draft the description, and then whoever clicks that calendar button can send out the invite. Um, so smart, and the smart chips doesn't just stop there. If I do at symbol and I do, for example, a task, I can assign that task to someone. So I'll do Simone, for example, if that auto populates, which it's not for some reason. Ah, well, oh, that's a task name, that's why. Okay, so I need her to buy me a coffee clearly because I'm putting things in wrong by, uh, me a coffee, uh, and then I'll assign that to, uh, there you go, there's another spelling mistake, Simone. Uh, French, there we go, and I can say you need to do that uh, today, actually, I need the coffee today. So I can assign that task to her. Now, that means that it's going to assign that task to her in her tasks, in Gmail, in the tasks app, all of those different places. And it says, hey, you've assigned this person's a task in a document she doesn't have access to. Do you want to allow her to view the task in the document? You click share. Um, and that smart chip has already created uh, en enough for me to, to do tasks management within there. If you do meeting notes, which, I, which is very frustrating, I can't do right now. Uh, but if you do the meeting notes block, and you guys can try it in your own account, open a Google Doc, do at symbol, and try meeting notes. It's going to give you the agenda, who's attended, and be able to set tasks with one click. You don't need to do any of that extra stuff. The important thing here to take away is that with smart chips, you can enter what's called variables. So <clears throat> I might do company name. So if I enter this variable and then anywhere else in the document, I add another variable, I can just add company name. So if I enter company name in this one, it will fill out in the entire document for company name. It's a variable within your document. Now you start thinking about templates, contract templates, all these things makes it much easier, okay? So that's smart chips. So hands up, don't be shy, hands up who who's, didn't know about smart chips because I'm, I'm curious if that's a new thing. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of hands. Oh my goodness. Well, if you didn't take anything away, please take away about smart chips today. Um, good. So with that in mind, you know, I've probably, uh, hopefully I've made your day and week with smart chips. With that in mind, let's go back to do AI for Google Docs. So doc.new. Okay. Now, I am going to ask it to help me write. So what I'm going to do, oops, uh, dismiss. There we go. Help me write. And I'm going to ask it to create. There we go. And again, I have tested this one. 
Uh, create a templated letter providing staff with good news of their yearly bonus amount. Now, the reason I drafted this one is off the top of my head, I, I kept thinking about drafting a letter for, for how to fire people, and I think that's a bit negative in demo. So let's do it the other way around. Let's do draft a letter to send out for your staff's yearly bonus. So I hit create here. Now it's going to go through, and I want you to notice something here. It's going to, it's created that email template of what the writing is, but notice it's got those blue squares. That's the smart chip it's incorporating into its prompt response. So if I hit insert now, it's going to create the email, but actually have the variables already ready in that because I've said, create me a template. Now, if I did, if I, oops, let me just do this. If I, oops, here we go. If I click your AI button again and I do this template, but this time I'm going to ask it to create an email template. There you go. So this time create an email template for the same thing. Uh, I should have changed the prompt, but I'm not feeling very creative. Apologies. Um, now look what it's going to do. It's going to use both smart chips. It can use the email smart chip and the variable smart chip. So the reason I think this is important is because I get the question, yeah, but I can just use like Bard or ChatGPT, copy and paste the results straight into my in, in, into my document. You can, but actually you're doing so much more with your AI. You're using the Google Workspace tools as they're designed to be used. You may not have even realized that you can use variables and smart chips, which some of you didn't today, but then by using your AI and asking for a template, it will have used features you didn't even know existed in Google Workspace to enable your work. This is not just about enabling and productivity, it's also educating your staff on how to use the tools using Jira AI. Yeah, good. So that's content creation. Let's go one further. This is my favorite. I absolutely do not like reading long texts. Um, it's my, my, my least favorite thing, let's put it that way. So. With that in mind, let's give you a scenario. You've just gone through with your procurement team that you are going to consider Zoom. Now, I know there's some Googlers in the room. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Zoom, Zoom happens sometimes, but um, if any of you do use Zoom, just let me know, we'll have that conversation. Um, but let's say, let's say you've got Zoom, some Zoom licenses. Now, you're gonna go through all the terms and conditions. Like what I would you normally do with terms and conditions is do a control find for the keywords of the issues of the things I need to know about. But it means you miss things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the entirety of these terms and conditions from top to bottom, hit copy. And we're gonna go back to our document. Actually, let's just insert a line just so you can see it's divided and a paste those terms and conditions. And now I don't know why, but it changes the formatting after I highlight it. Yeah, this is very strange. The text is there, it's just an odd color. Um, but let me just go to the top. Oh wow, there's a lot of terms and conditions. Right, now I'm going to highlight all the terms and conditions here. And actually, I only really care about the security parts of these terms and conditions, okay? So I'm gonna highlight it, I'm gonna hit the Jira AI button. And what I'm gonna do, oops, let me just copy this as well so I didn't get spelling mistakes. There we go, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you, if you highlight something, you, you have the option to change the tone, summarize, bullet point. Now you could summarize or bullet point ties and you get bullet point a summary of those terms and conditions. But I, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna prompt a response, I'm gonna say, Summarize the security details from this text, okay? And I'm gonna hit go. So it's gonna read that text. It's gonna go through what it, con it contextually thinks is relevant to security. Again, this is uh, AI at, at its finest in terms of opinions. Uh, it's gonna give me a bullet point summary of all of the security items in that. Now, obviously, <clears throat> I do suggest you go through this anyway. I'm not saying you, you you use this as your end all, but it's a great starting point. Now I've just taken five page document and summarized it into what, six, seven bullet points for what the security details are there, yeah? 
So it's it's also about summarizing and contextualizing and understanding text in in, te in documents too. Good. Um, okay. I'm going to shift back. So, so I, I'm I'm going to stop with Docs now. I mean, I could talk all day about Google Docs and the rest of it, but we're not going to. Um, I'm going to flip back to uh, our slides here, and hopefully you see the Docs page. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so. This is a, just a, a kind of a snippet, an idea of what you can do with Duo AI today on your Google Workspace environment. Um, there's lots of stuff coming, and I'm, I'm just going to talk about some of these things as well. So many of these features are in already. Um, there are other things coming. So um, for example, uh, generating um, speaker notes um, and generating soundtracks for slides. Um, you know. Uh, a chart generation is coming for sheets, although that's already arguably in there with Explore. So uh, definitely look at Explore once you've got content from your AI and sheets. Um, chat is coming very soon as well. So help me write in in chat. Uh, that's the the one to one chat. Um, and Meet uh, is, is enabling some very cool features. Uh, things like um, taking notes uh, and also taking action items from meetings. So it's listening to the meeting. And I say to Simone again uh, in the call, you know, I need I need you to get me a coffee next week, whatever. Um, it will take that as a task, assign it to Simone because it's in it, it's contextualizing the meet. Um, so there's lots of things coming uh, in Duo AI. I think the, the key message here is um, you can uh, you know, watch how AI progresses in, in the wonderful world of tech and then say, oh, this is really cool. I'm going to wait for it all, all, to, all the AI stuff to be, to be done and, and then I'll jump on. Or you can jump on now and follow that journey that Google is clearly taking with AI within your work environment um, so you don't get left behind there as well. Good. Um, and so I'm going to end with questions. Um, so I'll, uh, before we thank you, so I'll just kind of jump in and say thank you for, for that. And before we open up uh, to the audience for questions, um, I mean, it's fantastic to see, you know, the different prompts you do and what results you get. And sometimes, you know, it can be a bit hit or miss, but, you know, the, the evolution, as you said, from, you know, a couple of months ago to a few weeks ago to today. Um, and also, you know, just the possibility. So you're not starting with a blank state uh, slate. It, it gives you that kind of you know, launch pad uh, to, to start from um, and maybe the, the inspiration uh, that you need. But I, I have a question for you first. So, um, you know, so why now? Why do you think it's important for us, you know, now? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And we get this from a lot of customers. Um, and there's a few things here. So one of them is, is what I said earlier, just join that journey with Google as it progresses and it, it becomes better. Um, you, you, you join that journey early, you and your staff. Remember that you guys are probably all very technical. You're very, you know, you can get onto that technical features very quickly, but not every business has a full suite of technical staff. And so it's it's really important to, to get them started uh, in, a, in, in an environment that has uh, a solid uh, subset of features and as those features progress and grow and there's more features they take that journey with google um, to be to be able to use ai to its best ability so there's that part um, it also now is, is a good time because we don't know what the future holds right now you you are potentially could get a very good deal for licenses with the other team and we don't know where that's going next year so we do know what we can offer you now in terms of licenses as well um, and I think the other part here is, um, is 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 making sure that you could enable your users on your AI. So, like I said before, technical people will be all over this, um, but actually, some of those people that are frontline or some of those people that need to be using it will, will need some of that attention to to show and guide how they can best use it to improve their workday. Yeah, and I know. I mean, this is this is what you do on a daily basis, right? You uh you work with many of our customers uh, throughout the whole of EMEA, um, you've got a really good insight into their needs and, and challenges. And, and this is part of, you know, your role as head of customer success uh, to help people, you know, succeed um, and uh, to be successful in, in their journey with Google Workspace. Um, but how are we enabling customers to take uh, advantage of Duet AI? 
Really the good question. Oh, go ahead. Was there someone else that was going to answer? Okay, so a really good question here. Um, we do have um, an enablement program. So um, I gave you some samples of uh, support desk users, for example. There's a reason we have those examples, as a, uh, just to, to set your mindset. We have customers that really want to take the ability of Duo AI and then make sure that their all, all the different uh, personas and roles in their business can take advantage of that. So what we do is we'll we'll do regular cadences with different roles and staff members within a business, show them how they can apply AI to their role in order to not just enable productivity, but also create a standard of output for your business. Uh, you've seen earlier, right? The responses that you get in an email are formal, well-written. So actually, how do you make sure that uh, this, the this, the people in your business you give licenses to use it to its fullest to enable the business and and, and also enable their productivity and that's a regular cadence that's uh, you know setting KPIs uh, with, with with surveys and questionnaires to those people uh, and making sure we do regular touch points because you can enable this and then users will just forget it's on and just go back to their old ways of working um, so it's really about making sure you drive that the uh, usability. It's a really important point. Um, and I saw we had a, we've got a couple of um, hand raises and, and some questions, so maybe we can open up to the audience. Um, I see that uh, Evgenia has a, a question in the chat. Can you prompt it to collect, consolidate, and rewrite knowledge from multiple locations of the Google Workspace ecosystem? That's such a good question. Um, it's probably the most common question. Um, so I think you've got to. <laughs> One of those things, AI is one of those things that you've got to, um, you, you definitely got to jump on that bandwagon, but also cautiously. Now, I say this because um, you're probably thinking, oh, I want, I want your AI to go and grab the my budget document, uh, you know, be able to summarize it here with a prompt, right? So you want to be able to use prompt and AI based on the data that's already in your business. Um, now, there's, there's, there's a pro and a con for here, and, and it's, it's definitely somewhere that I imagine AI is going for sure. Um, but the issues here are that we need to be, we tread carefully. If someone in the business prompts the AI to say, I, I want to see everyone's average salary, you know, we've got to make sure that your AI and AI doesn't come back to people showing salaries of everyone, right? So now you're, now we're talking about security. And I think um, it's, it, right now, like I said, the journey, we're at the start of that journey, we don't, we don't have that capability within your AI. But actually, for a good reason, we, as a, as, individual businesses here need to consider our security within our environment. How do we classify documents? How do we label those documents that should be accessible by who? All of that needs to be prep work before we can even consider opening up AI to start grabbing data within your environment to be able to prompt. So it's a really good question. And for a very good reason, it's not available just now. But take this opportunity today to get ahead of the AI curve and prep your business data with data classifications, drive labels, all that stuff. I hope, I know that's a really long answer to the question because it's a great question, um, but I hope that that uh, answers the question. Thanks, Pablo. And Cassia, I see you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? No, I don't, it must have been from the, um, from the survey, yeah. Sorry. That's all right. No problem. I think Demir also had a question. Okay. Uh, can you train Duet AI on, for example, the furniture case, your own TNC page? Okay. Great question again. So remember that slide that Simone showed where we've got Duet AI for workspace, Duet AI for GCP, and then Vertex AI and all these other AI products. So that one needs to be. A, a different product. So yes, we actually do this for some uh, of our customers as well. We use Vertex AI, I think it was, and this is going into the realm of the GCP side. So I go grab my GCP SME, but, but yes, we do this. So um, it's not using Duet AI um, for the reasons that Duet AI is embedded for everyone in the business. Um, what we, what you would be looking at here is a Vertex AI offering where you would feed it that, that business data. And then from that business data, it can provide your agents with all of the information it needs, very similar to how you do prompts in Duet AI. So yes and no, not in Duet AI, but yes, we do do it 
and it is definitely capable of a, a, an offering that we can do. Right. Thank you, Pablo. I, I think we're almost uh, on top of the time, unfortunately. Um, so please, if you have any other questions, um, do reach out to us. I think most of you have my uh, email. Um, so please, you know, reach out with any questions there. Thank you very much for attending this, this session today. Um, if you'd like to arrange a, a demo um, or talk more about the enablement program um, for your organization, please let us know. Um, we currently also have a great discount um, if you want to, you know, lock yourself in. So um, we'll also send a, a follow up email to this. Um, for the people attending on site um, in Stockholm and Malmö, we also have some refreshments and, and lunch available. Um, and we also have uh, Ron and Matthias in Malmö who can do a demo. And we've also got uh, Araya and myself here. Um, so thank you, Pablo. Thank you once again. Um, and look forward to, to, to chatting uh, to you all uh, in Jura and Google Workspace. Uh, have a great one. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.